Hi everyone, this is Bob from the Tech Leads. We're on to video number three. So today we're going to talk about the plugins that we use for our base deployment. The idea behind all of this is we're really setting up an environment so that we can go and build a repeatable image that has all of the settings in it that we want, all of the plugins. We're going to build out a couple pages. Uh, we're going to go through and build out a bunch of patterns maybe even take a theme and extend it, make it your own, load your own fonts. Uh, and then we'll show how you can avoid having to, to put a bunch of plugins in by running and managing your own CSS. So that's kind of the construct of what we're working towards. So I'm going to um, focus on a couple of the plugins today that help us do that. And then we'll, in the next video, which should be coming pretty shortly, uh, we'll start diving into uh, the block editor. Uh, or the full site editor FSC, so I've so I've learned, uh, and we'll start playing around with that, and I'll show you uh, how to be really really fast and productive in that environment, which I, th I think a lot of people struggle with. So that'll be the fun fun stuff getting started. Next video, this one we're just kind of build out that base again. Uh, I'll demonstrate really quickly how to do you know how to take an image of your your whole configuration, and then we'll jump into the next video and start actually building some websites and some you know, with some blocks. Okay, so jumping right in, I'm gonna speed this up. I'll go download and install all of the plugins that we're gonna need for today. You can watch in the background so you can see what they look like when I go and pull them up, uh, and then we'll we'll dive into them as we we have them all up and running. Okay, so now we have all of our plugins loaded that we're going to use for this discussion today. Uh, there's a couple in here that are really optional. I only included them because I found them useful for some of the things I do on, on our website and others. Um, they have some cost to them, not financial cost, but usually a cost on performance. Uh, but I'll talk about that it, as we go through them and as we go in detail. The, you know, the general idea for me is I'm always trying to, to stay lean on the website. Uh, had someone make a, a snide remark the other day that I, I'm very anti-plugin. I guess that came across in the first video. So I'm not anti-plugin. I'm just anti-slow plugin. So the, the plugins here that I'm, I'm sharing, uh, have, I've measured the performance and the impact of using them. Um, some of them have a noticeable impact. Most of them don't have any impact. So really kind of looking for a, a balance in usability, affordability, and the impact on performance, and then what I can get out of them and, and uh, what, what they give me versus going in other directions, like child themes and other things you can kind of get stuck in uh, where they may not give you the best benefit that you would get otherwise. So let's jump into them. The first one is the admin and site enhancements tool. So typically called ASE. Uh, this one's getting a, a lot of visibilities just because it encompasses uh, literally dozens of plugins. So instead of going and downloading multiple plugins to do uh, single functions each, you can use ASC and it'll provide a, a lot of those functions from one single uh, small, easily easily contained plugin. You configure it at the plugin list, so you don't have another menu item. So you can see other ones. I've already created new menu items here, um, but you can go and then set it up. You can do do stuff around uh, content management. 
So I'm typically going to allow SVGs to be uploaded. And then you can set the permissions for those. I like duplication as well. Content order. There's a couple things in here that, you know, you may find useful, right? So I'm not going to go through all of them. Uh, there is a whole bunch of really good videos out on YouTube though, about all of the different things you can do in here. The one thing that I do always typically take care of is changing the login URL. All right. So, uh, real easy to do here. You basically just put in the, a new name. So you get around the, the WP admin, uh, link. So you change that. And I typically will change it to, you know, whatever it could be back office or back end. Um, it can be, you know, all kinds of different things. Just make it sure, make sure that it's something that you remember. And then you've got other things in here as well. Like, you know, the number of times you're going to log in where it's going to basically move you to another site. So there's, there's a, a, a couple things in here that you can do from a security perspective. Yeah. So log in temps. So you can turn that on you can, you can play around with how many, you know, login attempts you get, and then you can, you know, detect IP addresses and do all kinds of other cool stuff in here. So lots of really good utilities. There's a couple things in here that I recommend you, you do. Security, I think is going to be the, you yeah, know, the XML RPC side of the house. So you can kind of turn that off so that you're not having a remote procedure call done in your WordPress environment. I think the number now is that at 55% of all WordPress instances of hacking occur through some sort of plugin, right? So another idea here is that you're reducing the number of plugins you have. So that you reduce that vulnerability, um, but you're also kind of controlling your environment and reducing opportunities for people to come in and, and either probe your website or to go to some of these interfaces like XML RPC that you may not realize that you're able to do interaction with at the website level. So this will help you control all of that. The other plugin I like and that we're going to use right after we finish this, uh, going through the plugin list is the all in one WP migration. And this is where you can take backups. You can export the site. We're typically going to export it to a file. We'll show that how that works here in a second. And then I can just easily import that file, uh, and restore the site to a previous location. So I I've gotten really good at being in the habit. If I'm making changes on the site, especially if, you know, it's hosted someplace, if, you know, I don't want to go and, you know, lose that content or I want to back up, I can just go into the all in one migration tool, make a quick backup, download it. I have it locally. Now I can deploy it anywhere else I have to, right? So if I'm changing hosts, if I'm duplicating the site and running it in multiple locations, if I want to take all the sites and assets that I've developed for that site and use it for another website and just go in and alter it, it's a great way to move things around, keep your whole site contained. It, it's got all the plugins, all the settings, all the content, all the media, all the page development that you've done. So you put it all in one nice tight file. Uh, it is zipped. So it, it they try to get it compressed as much as possible. And now you're off to the races. You can go and install it anywhere you want and you're, you're up and running. So that's kind of the purpose of this video and what we're going to demonstrate. Content control is another good one, especially for the, the different screen sizes you need to be developing for, right? So you're going to have a mobile size, you're going to have a tablet size, and then you're going to have a desktop size. So, you know, one of the things you'll have to get used to as you're going through WordPress development is constantly changing your browser size, size to see how your page lays out in those three viewing types. So content control gives you the ability to set certain elements in your page, either visible or not visible. So you can kind of build rules around when certain, um, features or, you know, certain images even. A lot of times you get into icons that don't really need to be on the page for mobile. Go and look at how your mobile view looks and it's really distorted because of the way everything kind of gets shrunk down. So this is a great way that you can just go in and basically say this content isn't really needed on mobile. Uh, I don't need a lot of images really. So I can go and just blank those out for that view. So really easy to control what, what people are seeing 
uh, especially if things are getting out of sort in the different views, you can go in and, and get all of that back under control really easy. Depictor is an optional plugin. I only include it because if you're, if you need to be fast and you're trying to get some stuff done where you don't want to go write a bunch of custom CSS, uh, you want a little bit of am, uh, animation in your page, you want overlays of images, you want some things moving around on the screen, uh, and you want to, you know, you want a background with things on top of it, maybe a video. Uh, Depictor is a really good way to do it fast. It's, it's, you get a lot of functionality in the free version, so you don't have to go and, and pay for the upgrade if you don't want to. Uh, but the upgrade does give you a lot more capabilities, especially around animation and some of the things you can do with images and text and gradients. And there's some cool features in it that I, I've found are, you know, re easily replaced just using CSS if you can, you know, figure out how to get that code to work for um, your particular need. The other one that's optional here, and there's there's a couple different ways to go and do this. Everyone's got different ones. I like formidable forms because it's just got a really good form layout. So I, I like the look and, and feel of it. The free version doesn't restrict any fields. So there's a bunch that I've tried where you, you can't put a phone number in or, you know, you, you have to go and jump through some hoops to get like fields that you would typically use. And then you have limited control over what the layout looks like. So I like formidable just because it's got a really nice default layout. So it fits into most websites. Uh, and then you've got some level of control there as well. And it's the, the free version is really, you know, restriction free in a lot of ways. And there's a lot of other stuff you can do with it. You can do surveys, you can do polls, you can do uh, all kinds of different things. I'm typically only playing with the forms, just a contact form, or you know, get more information. Um, you know, you, you can do it for uh, other things where there's a lot of interaction with the people viewing the web page. And then you got simple custom CSS and JS. So I like this one just because you can take a look at it here. Uh, you can kind of place where in the code you're gonna drop this, right? Uh, so I, I get a little bit of control here. I could drop, you know, I can drop this in the, the the head element. I can drop it in the footer element. So I get a, a little control here as to where I can put stuff. It's got a nice little coding interface. I'll say that there is a, you know, I, I mentioned that admin and site enhancements does a lot of the same stuff. You can do this with this tool as well. So it's almost kind of repetitive. I know, I know someone's going to get me. But I just like this interface a little bit better, right? And I can I can add multiple pieces of code. I can move them around in different places on the you know the website so that they load in different places, which is really tricky with WordPress because it's doing so much in the background. Sometimes it just goes and overrides your code. Uh, and this is just a nice little interface where you can kind of make changes real quick, save it, go go view what the impact of that change is on your site, and then you're you're off to the races again. And then last but not least is uh, another Jackson tip. A couple of these, he just had a video out on this one just a couple weeks ago. You'll really struggle, you know, I, I mentioned Depictor a little bit earlier, but one of the things that I was challenged with and, and still, you know, struggle with today is good sliders. And sliders that you can control that, that, don't, that don't have controls on them. I just want a nice little you know, our, our partners section or our customers section, maybe it scrolls, maybe it doesn't, but I don't want to spend all of my time trying to line up, you know, a dozen logos and make them look nice. It, Splide works really good in, in kind of setting that up for the smaller little slider that you need. So gr great little tool. If you're going to go try to work with sliders and you don't want to go and, and download a bunch of expensive plugins, Splide is a, is a great place to start and it's got low impact on the site. Okay, so now that we're up and running, we've got our plugins loaded. Just to kind of show how it works, we're gonna take our first export. And, you know, you can call this a backup to a degree. And I'm gonna export this to a file. I, I can drive it to other places if I want. So I've got a lot of options here. Obviously, I'm gonna to to put some authentication information in here, but I can just put it into a file It's a pretty small site right now, so it shouldn't take too long to get through this. And then I can just go download that file. I can keep it locally. And now I can upload it or put it into another directory locally if I need it. 
It's, it's really that easy. And then if I want to download it, that's it. I'm done. All right. So that's the video for today. For the next one, we're really going to take the gloves off and we're going to dive into uh, the block editor. I think you're really going to get some, some good stuff out of this one. So uh, lots going on there. Been in the environment a lot lately. Come up with some really good approaches to how to run in that environment and to build things from scratch. So uh, I look forward to the next vid. Thank <laughs> you.